All right, so we're at IPFS Camp 2019. We're at the Sci-Fi Fair, and we're here with Hector San Juan, who's a great contributor, contributor at PL. So tell us a little bit more about what, what you're doing at PL and what you have brought to, to show everybody in Sci-Fi Fair. So I'm the project lead for IPFS Cluster. And what Cluster does is to be able to orchestrate Pinset with multiple IPFS demons. Yeah. What we're showcasing at this uh, Sci-Fi Fair is a real cluster running on Raspberry Pis. And each of those boxes has a visualization of the pins that are currently in the cluster. So you will see flashing lights, and you will see flashing lights. We always like flashing exactly. lights. Exactly. So every, every time something is pinned, it yes. will do a flash. Yeah. And you will see how pins are added to the cluster. Every item is replicated to six different IPFS demons at the same time. That's pretty cool. And you know, like with this kind of technology that we're building, that is so deep and like uh, in, in the back end, so to speak, it's difficult to get the observability and it's, it's difficult to understand what's going on. So like little experiments like this that actually show you that you can touch, that you can see blinking in real life, as we're going to show now, are super important to have people understand what's going on behind Exactly. Behind the scenes, you normally right? don't see. In the end, you're just maintaining a shared pin set. Yes. But behind, there are all the blocks of the IPFS stack, all the P2P. We're using peers. Um, we're using secure channels, we're using multi-streams, we're using CRDDs to sync the state, yeah. we're using the IPFS chunkers, we're using the reproviders for the DHT, we're using about every piece on the stack to make a distributed application on top of a distributed application. Yes. And normally you don't see all that, everything is <laughs> summarized to a nice like blinking, blinking cursor. Yeah, it's awesome, yeah. so can you show us what's going on here, what do you have here? I have a computer which is now adding random pins yeah. to this cluster. All right. Can you can you take it in your hand? Okay. Sure. Awesome. I have a computer which is adding random pins pins to this cluster, and what we see here is that every time a pin comes through in each uh, cluster peer, we see this flashing green light, and we see how one more little box appears on this column. Once that column is filled up, it gets cleaned up, and a new box appears over there. So the first column means one pin, the second column means five pins, the third column means 25 pins, the fourth column means 125 pins, and so on. So it's so kind of like a little abacus, right? It's kind of like a little abacus, so that's keeping the count of how many files you store, in, right? Exactly, so you can find the total count by adding the number of actual squares yeah. uh, on all the columns. So now we have probably over 625 pins right. already. Yeah. And we see that as they come through, yeah. 625 plus, That's maybe cool. we're around like a thousand pins and they're slowly going on one by one. So you can see the red light is also the, blinking. And the red lights are peers. blinking and that means that the number of peers co connected. So there should be, in total, there should be about six red lights yeah. uh, and blinking. And how are people inter interacting with uh, these cluster nodes right now? What I, like? Can, can I pin some content in these clusters? How would I do it? You can pin in several ways. One way we enable people to pin from is an IRC pin bot. So yes. they can just go on our IRC channel yeah. and say... Which is IPFS camp right now? Yes. Yeah, hash IPFS camp. Yeah. You can um, say pin freedoms. something. Pin a CID or pin a slash IPNS a slash uh, whatever address. Yeah. And this will get added to the to the yeah. block cluster. And Hector just showed you one single box, but there's actually six of them. So do you want to get the cluster over there? So there's an IPFS cluster running here. So tell us a little bit more about how these are connected and how they're collaborating together. So they are connected basically using lip 2 p This is a lip 2 p swarm. Mm -hmm. And they're forming a network. And as you see, yeah. the, the actual number of pins is more or less the same in all of them. They will catch up uh, to the same number when everyone converges. To so the they're same converging place. eventually? They're, they're coming all, to consensus? They're all pinning the same thing. Right. The state in all of them will be the same, and this yeah. state is converging using CRDTs. Sweet. So that means that if I take one of these boxes and I smash it on the ground and you know I break it completely, that content is still being served from five other boxes. Precisely. And Sweet. if you manage to plug it again, 
and yeah. the others made some progress, the box that came behind will catch up. Will catch up. That's awesome. So you're creating redundancy here for the for the data that you're storing in in IBFS cluster, essentially. And reliability. And reliability. Yes. That's that's pretty cool. So what's on the roadmap right now for IBFS cluster? Where are we going towards with with this project? Our main feature, which is upcoming in our next release, are collaborative yeah. clusters. It's the idea that you can collaboratively participate in a cluster yep. without exposing your cluster beer or your IPFS daemon to, to people that you don't trust. Therefore, we will have some pin set maintainers yeah. which will decide what goes into what archive. For example, climate yeah. data, you will have a curator which adds climate data to certain uh, cluster. Yeah. And we will have followers in that cluster that do not necessarily trust each other but trust the curator of the data. Okay. And they will be able to collaboratively back up that data on IPFS right. just by running the cluster daemon. Right, right. So you're having kind of like one leader be kind of like the trust reference that you can connect Precisely. to? Not necessarily yeah. one leader, you could have multiple trusted peers, yeah. multiple peers that other people trust to, to maintain their archive, Yeah. but not everyone Without needs giving privileged exactly, access to the entire everyone needs cluster. to trust everyone. You will have peers which are there just to receive the updates and yeah. help back up the content yeah. Yeah, without yeah. opening... So it's kind of like it peers. creates some level of federation, right? In the sense that you have different layers, you have different... Uh, like network segments and so on that you trust that you don't trust but without like having a fully connected mesh essentially yes um, using pubs we can have this sort of loosely connected networks yeah and what we essentially have is what we call the trusted peers yeah and the rest we call them followers so right. who are people who are just following pin sets. Nice. And nice. it allows you to create super very interesting architecture. Yeah. Super exciting, man. Yeah, yeah. That's very cool. All right, so is there something else that you want to say to everybody watching here? Come join the cluster. Yeah, um, try out IPFS <laughs> cluster. Uh, next release will be amazing, super easy to set up. We are revamping the documentation, so we will have much better documentation. Go ahead and try it out. It's a very nice project. Go ahead and try it out. <laughs>